now is Easter Sunday. And I thought I wanted to say something to you all about Easter Sunday. You see, before Rome accepted Christianity, they would celebrate pagan holidays around the winter solstice, December 21st, and around the vernal equinox, which is around March the 21st. And since when the Romans and the pagans would celebrate the vernal equinox, which is spring, the earth dying in winter, cold, ice and snow, when something is in the form of ice and snow, even though it has potential life, it cannot give life until the temperature rises above 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees centigrade, causing the ice and snow to melt. And when the ice and snow melt into life-giving water, the earth that was once dead in winter comes alive in spring. So when the pagans accepted Christianity, they decided that the resurrection of Jesus from death was synonymous of the resurrection of the earth after the death of winter in the spring forth of new life. When the pagans had their holiday, they would worship the goddess of love, the goddess of fecundity, the goddess of fertility, and her name was Aistate. And during the time of the vernal equinox, they would have orgies, and the girls would come out in flowered garments, flowers in their hair, letting the men know that as the earth is fertile now, and as the earth has come into a season to bring forth life, here am I, take me. So in Rome, these were times of great orgies. If you don't know what an orgy is, I don't know what country you live in. Uh, you, you should know as much as this is going on. So in Easter, now this ain't got nothing to do with Jesus now. They buy new clothes. Because it's Easter. Just like the earth looks like it's putting on a new garment in spring. For you to be in harmony with the resurrection of the earth, you would buy a new garment for Easter. And the women would, of course, buy the bonnets with a lot of flowers and whatnot. Then you go to church. Hadn't been all year. So Easter Sunday is a fashion show especially when it's time for communion.
and you would walk on up to the altar to get your little wafer, <clears throat> drink your little wine, sing a little hallelujah chorus, and talk about how he died and he rose from the dead. Beautiful teaching. But what does it mean? It said he died in three days. He rose from the dead. Well, you figure it out with me today. He died on Friday. Friday. In the evening. He was hanging a while. I don't know why you call it Good Friday. Except that what he did was going to produce good for humanity. We'll get to meanings a little later. But today, with the help of God, you're going to know what you've been believing all your life what it actually means. Some of you getting ready for Easter? 90 going to 100. Lord have mercy. Lord child. Lord Jesus. It's Easter. You getting ready to get your big hat with the cherries and bananas and all stuff on top of it. In your Easter dress and your Easter shoes and your Easter suit. You wearing silk and satin and Uchi and Poochie and Gucci. And if you can't afford that, you're wearing the twins, Polly and Esther. For Easter. Who was Easter? This is genocide. This is a part of the Holocaust. Who was Easter? Easter is an old white sex god got nothing to do with Jesus the black revolutionary messiah the black son of the living God the black messiah the black redeemer does a white rabbit have to do with Jesus what does a white man with a red suit on have to do with Jesus this fella gets more play than Jesus you better stop sitting your babies on these crackers laps in these malls Bouncing your babies on these crackers lap. And that cracker sitting there talking about ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Jeffrey Dahmer. Here's a cracker working at a chocolate factory in the daytime and eating chocolate black men at nighttime. You better be careful, you integrationists. Some of these white folks grinning at you, they might want to eat you. Look, let's stop lying to our babies. Give the credit to yourself. Bond with your children. Bond with your children. Stop working your fingers to the bone and then give the credit to a fat imaginary white man. Tell your babies, mommy got this for you. Daddy got this for you. Don't tell them some white man got it for them while they were asleep. Make them grow up to love you, to honor you, to respect you. And then you wonder why they grow up to be liars when you start them out telling them lies all the time. White people in pagan backward Europe used to get buck naked. The white woman would dye her body and paint her body from head to toe. She would hide in the bushes, hide in the trees, hide in the caves. The white man would go, he didn't go Easter egg hunting. The white man would Easter leg hunt. And wherever he found a white woman, he'd jump right on her right there. Sometimes two or three 
men would jump on one white woman. They thought that all of this silly, perverse sexual activity is what made the flowers bloom, which made what made the birds sing, and they thought that filled the atmosphere with the fragrance of spring. The fools didn't know it was going to be spring anyway. Some white men would get naked and paint their bodies all over too, and they would go hide hoping somebody would find them and mistake them for a white woman. <laughs> this is history. Easter, Estarte, Orista, is the name of a white sex god. That's why they use the egg. That's why they use the bunny. Why do you think the bunny is the same symbol for the Playboy magazine and the Playboy bunnies and the Playboy club that is used for Easter. <laughs> Estarte, Easter, or Easter. They tell you one year Jesus was resurrected in March Next year, he got up in April. <laughs> I mean, did he get up in March or did he get up in April? You can't get up one time, one, you can't get up one month this year and get up the next month next year. Yo, you know what I'm saying? Give me a break. This has nothing to do with Jesus, the black revolutionary messiah. Get this out of your home. Take these crackers down from your wall. Take this white Jesus down. Take your white angels down. Take your white Mary down. Take your white Last Supper 13 crackers sitting at a table. Take them down. Put them in the garbage can. And set the garbage can out on the sidewalk. And let the garbage man pick it up and take it to the garbage dump. You must have a black liberation theology. Jesus was on the cross several hours and then the book says he gave up the ghost but it was in the evening Friday an earthquake came and the disbelievers that were around the cross casting lots for his garments said truly this is the son of God it took an earthquake great darkness comes over and an earthquake to make them say well this man that we've been doing all of this to now these are the disbelievers that put him up there. They're saying, truly, surely, he is the son of God. A man by the name of Joseph of Arith, whatever. Thank you. Joseph of Arimathea came and took him and they took him to a tomb. They wanted to make sure that nobody would steal his body and then claim he had risen from the dead. So they put a stone and sealed the tomb and then put centurions on the outside of the tomb to make sure that nobody would come. But the centurions that were watching fell asleep on the watch. It says, and the angel came and rolled the stone away. And the Jesus that they had laid in the tomb had risen, was gone. 
It was females, not the males, that were around the tomb. The men were somewhere shook up. I mean, these, these were some jive dudes, you hear me? After Jesus had done all this for these brothers, in his hour of trial, which really was their trial, you notice Jesus didn't speak. He's, he just wouldn't talk. So Isaiah the prophet said he was like a sheep, dumb before its shearers. And if you've ever had a sheep, when it's time around next month, when they shear the sheep, they turn the sheep over and flip it and hold it and shear it. And you don't see the sheep saying nothing. Somebody taking its wool and the sheep ain't even saying bad. Well, that's the description that they gave of Jesus in court and he's not testifying because it really wasn't his trial. That's why the Christians sing the song, were you there when they crucified my Lord? Because it wasn't my Lord's trial. It was yours because that man walked among you. That man taught you. That man healed the blind, made the deaf hear, the dumb speak, and raised the dead to life. And yet in his trial, those weak ones didn't even show up. 